Hello YouTube, Dave here again. Welcome back to part 5, I believe this is, of Eternal Darkness Sanity's Requiem. Uh, so we finished off Kareem's chapter, and we have here in the kitchen, uh, aside from the bleeding walls, which we'll just ignore, uh, we have a wooden plaque that's fastened to the door, taking the place will be a lock. A colored sigil is carved into the wood above the wide, or above a wide slot. The slot is just wide enough to insert a narrow blade. So that would be enchantment of the gladius, since I had a picture of the gladius. So that is now enchanted. Let's go ahead and use that. Oh, and there was a rat. Big old rat in the pantry. Uh, one thing I've never quite figured out. Sorry, just the creepy breathing sound effects there. All right. Anyway, uh, just turn that back down. Uh, one thing I've never really thought of trying is to see if that rat is actually a. Uh, Sanity effect. Like so, if my if I refilled my sanity before I opened it, if a rat would actually come out or not. Uh, so we got a spice jar with a piece of paper in it. Let's give it a check. Uh, oops, I guess I should actually read it. So uh, there's a piece of paper inside. Should I open it? Sure. Chapter titled "Lurking Horror." The master of chaos, the keeper of the ancients, is long dead. The planets will be in alignment soon. All is prepared for your arrival. I will begin the final incantation that will bring you into our world within days. The next millennium will truly usher in a new age. Your guardians, now prepare the gate. All right, well that sounds bad, uh, but I don't need the spice jar anymore, so let's just go ahead and give this page a read. I will not argue that I was shocked by the sudden mention of one of my ancestors, the distinguished Dr. Maximilian Roybas. It chilled me to my bones. Where had this ancient book come from? How had my ancestor stumbled upon it? I feverishly began to read more, eager to learn his story. It seems that Maximilian had inherited his father's mansion, just as I had. Alone since the death of his wife, and since his children had their own adult lives, he explored the house to discover his family roots. It has been two weeks since the death of my father. It has finally come to me to look over the mansion. Now I am truly alone and forced to start a new life here in Rhode Island. I intend to make the mansion mine and live in it as my forefathers have to continue the family tradition. The mansion has its secrets, I'm sure. My time here to make them mine. <coughs> oh, excuse me. All right, uh, we're back. Oh. So, this is probably another one of my all-time favorite levels in this game. Uh, for one, for a couple of different reasons, but one of the big ones is uh, this is the first one with the pistol. So we get the flintlock pistol, which we already have. So I'm just gonna. Wander around the halls of my home with a gun. 
And it is, you know, the United States after all. Which, I should mention, uh, I'm Canadian, so, you know, I'm not crazy about guns. Yeah, I don't want this to get to be like a political thing, but, uh, anyway. Uh, alright, so. Uh, so this is the Royvis Mansion. Now, as you can see, there is a door here, where there was not a door in Alex's time. So, uh, let's try to open it. So it says, the door to the servants' quarters is securely locked. Maximilian, however, can't help but feel uneasy. An ominous presence lurks behind that door, making the hairs on his neck stand on end. So, um, if you watched the last episode, this character model may look familiar. We saw a ghostly blue apparition of it walking into the through the wall where this door was. So that probably tells you something bad's going to happen. And here we just have a stained glass window, uh, resplendent with bright colors and exquisite workmanship. There is something odd about it, perhaps uh, the curious detail of its shapes and content. Um, so yeah, I never really noticed too much off about it, except maybe the dotted black line, which I don't know how well it's going to show up. But anyway, let's start uh, looking around, shall we? Just running around the mansion, waving a gun around. And I uh, just got some ammunition here in the bathroom. So I got a servant. Uh, the servant is preoccupied with his duties. Alright, we'll leave him alone. Come down this way. Oh! More ammo. All right, we got another servant here. The servant mutters under his breath, not realizing the Max is nearby. He appears to be distressed at his lot in life, working all the time. So there is a secret uh, about these um, about these workers, these servants. Uh, first. Uh, the mirror's grim reflection returns Max's questioning gaze, his face racked with sleepless nights and, strange, and a strange gleam in his eye. A uh, hint at a growing, or a growingly odd demeanor. Uh, now again, I am better at reading than this. <laughs> it's just that I've got my camera tripod right in front of me. So, uh, parts of words get missed or kind of obscured, but anyway. So yeah, there's something unusual about the servants. So some the, the, there's a reason that some of the servants actually have dial or text to them, whereas the other ones just say that they're uh, caught up in their work. At least I want to say that that's the case. So this one here. Oops, can I talk to her? Talk. Uh, whilst performing her duties, the servants makes idle chit chat about the room's temperature. Okay, you know what? Maybe I'm wrong, but. Basically, if you watched the last episode, you probably know that, uh, actually, I should, hold on, I think I'm missing something. Um, so last, last chapter we encountered bone thieves, which hide inside of other creatures. And, uh, oops, and that's something that's basically going to be happening here. So some of these servants actually are uh, bone thieves in disguise. We found a letter, so let's just check that out first. So a letter written with some precision, uh, precision in longhand. Dear friend, the antiquity of which you ask is indeed the Tome of Eternal Darkness, or a copy of it at the least. Its secrets are still hidden from me, for I have been unable to read it, as have most scholars who have tried. I will remain within the sanctity of the mansion, for in the wrong hands, or it shall remain in the sanctity of the mansion, for in the wrong hands it will be a powerful weapon. Peruse it if you will, but beware its magic. It is a harsh mistress, Aaron Roybus. Alright. So, yeah, um, so some of these servants are actually uh, bone thieves. And once I claim the Tome of Eternal Darkness, they will all start to attack. However, if I attack them first, they will actually um, come after me. So the actual guards, as you can see, oh crap, um, 
that did not reload the way that I wanted it to. Um, let's just come in here. Uh, so the actual servants will um, cower. So let's just see if I can. Off, reload, reload. All right, and I think I got him. So let's just reload here, and uh, let's finish him off. Execution style. So there's a few of those around. Uh, kind of spoiled the surprise, but again, it's going to be happening anyway. And uh, yeah. Uh, now another thing that. Uh, when you play through for the first time with the medical journal, um, Max can actually do um, autopsies. Um, so whenever you kill a creature for the first time, you can examine it uh, rather than finish it off. And if you do that, you can take notes on it. Now, um, once so the, for the first time you do it, you can just kind of look at them. Whoops, and just kind of see what they look like. Uh, but after you beat Max's level. Um, there's actually like he'll rant and rave about each of the creatures or just in general while you're looking at the creatures uh, so I might show one of those later on uh, but since I've already autopsied or examined everything uh, I can't do that here so I got another letter so this letter the first one was written with precision this one is scrawled by a panicked hand with clotted ink Dear friend, the house has been forsaken by the ancients. I dare not enter for fear of my mortal soul. I would suggest that you leave also. Bring the book. It is far more potent, or is a far more potent tool uh, than you have learned. It may very well uh, swing the balance in our favor. A. Royce. All right, so he's starting to lose it. Uh, let's actually just look around here. So we just have the uh, the dining room, and uh, we got a fireplace here. Let's examine it. So there is something written beneath the image. When darkness spreads its wings before my master Zelatoth's greatest foe, the path to truth will be opened. So we've got four different symbols here: uh, Ulioth, Mentorok, Chaturga, and Zelatoth. Uh, so Zelatoth's enemy, which you can see from the picture, actually if you look at it. The arrows indicate, so you got the red pointing towards the green, the green points towards blue, and the blue points towards the uh, towards the red, and the purple's in the middle, because you don't actually do anything with that at this point in time. So, let's just put that in front of Chaturga. And access a little secret room here. So we've got a Reveal Invisible spell, a spell scroll, a saber, which is pretty awesome. There is also a second Flintlock pistol, so now I can actually dual wield them, which is really cool, but I'm going to go with the saber because it doesn't have to reload. And here we have the Tome of Eternal Darkness. Let's pick that up. Alright, Max lifts the Tome of Eternal Darkness. A letter slips out from between the pages. Deftly, Max catches it as it drops towards the floor. So we got a third letter, which is a letter scrawled almost indecipherably by a wavering hand. Dear friend, as I suspected, the ruins of Enga, that blasted necropolis, lie deep under the site of the mansion. Uh, the accursed servants of Zelatoth are so close I can almost hear their chittering. There is a secret opening in the basement, and from there we can gain access. I urge you to gather some men and seal it, or better still, destroy that damned place. I have stowed something that you will find useful on the upper level. Look to the light and you will find it. I wish that I could be at your side, but my ailment worsens daily, and I know that my time is short. A.R. Alright, so now all the servants in the house that are corrupted are going to attack me, including this one right here. So let's just get him. Oh, oh that's a bad place to... Alright. Uh, you know what? I never have to come back in this room, so let's just leave. 
Let's just leave. Open the door. Open the door. All right. So now uh, this is gonna. So that's a countering service. So he's he's normal. Let's just see if I can. Oh. Oh yeah. It's starting to get rough. Okay. Uh, another reason that I really wanted to. Um, have to sure and not be the last one uh, so that I could heal up because Max can't heal life like some of the characters had healing items he doesn't so I have to conserve my health until I can find um, uh, until I can get the Chaturga rune which I believe did I pick the oh I didn't I did not pick the codex. Took yeah, blah, blah. I did not pick the codex up for that. So let's get that. Oh, you know what? Perfect. Perfect. Even better. So I'll just head towards the uh, the red red glow. Red glow. Really? It's, there we go. I was gonna say, are we gonna do this again? Uh, the last episode, I wanted to get to the green, and it uh, took forever to actually appear. So this time. Uh, so this time, the uh, the red took a little while to get there, but so I got my health filled. So I, I guess I shouldn't say that there's no way to regain health. I forgot that there are actually trappers, um, because I always go into that room before I get the Tome of Eternal Darkness. So I never actually uh, encounter them there, because um, there's no reason to ever go back in that room. Uh, once you get the uh, the uh, the thing, there's there is a puzzle item which I'm going to pick up here as well. Right there. Um, whoop. I don't really feel like fighting you. Oh, and the room's upside down. So let's just exit back out. Alright. Um, let's actually get, get some of that sanity back. Um, there are some really unpleasant and kind of disturbing... Uh, I like how after this giant creature just freaked him out that he just goes back to scrubbing the floors. Eyes wide with fright, his head twists frantically left and right as if trying to see some invisible horror stalking him. Have you no eyes? Can't you see it? He cries. You know what? I'm a little worried about you. No, I'm not going to do it. Um, Can't remember what I, was, uh, what I was just saying before there, but let's just move on. Uh, to do where? So I think the only thing left to do is actually just go up here. Uh, I think I have the reveal invisible spell now. Yeah, I can reveal invisible, but so looking to the light. It's talking about this here, the sun on the on there, and there's a letter, an envelope, and a horror, right off the... Alright, so let's have a look at this letter. Check. Uh, the a paper envelope sealed with a glob of melted wax. An odd rune is pressed into the wax. There appears to be something heavy inside. Should I open it? Sure. So we've got a letter, and the basement key. Oops, uh, so the letter, letter number four, is written in a scrawling hand, reads, Dear friend, as I expected, the beasts are drawing closer to our discovery. They want the book for themselves, it seems, and do not want us to have it in our possession. I have taken steps to ensure that their ilk will not touch the key in this envelope. 
should you fall prey to their claws. Uh, the envelope containing a basement key has been sealed with an corrosive magic. If one not aligned to us tries to handle it, it will be uh, it will release uh, it it will be released in inflicting pain, suffering and a grievous blow to their sanity, should they have any left. Be swift with your task. Alright, and I kinda wanna be swift anyway, because I've only got about ten... nine minutes before my camera cuts out. See if I can get this done. Alright, everything's black and white now. But, all my stuff is maxed out again. I don't know what's going on here. Oh, there we have an ancient, or not an ancient, a horror with a uh, with a Chaturga rune inside of him. So let's just go ahead and. So this, you're, you're at full health here, regardless of where you were at before, um, and you return back to whatever health you had when you first entered this space. And like a dummy, I think I forgot to pick up that ammunition. I don't know if it's there when I come back. Alright, so, another thing I want to do is Spell List, Recover, Assign, Chaturga, Down. Alright. Perfect. So now I can heal myself. Uh, let's just give it a quick save. Whoa! Whoa! I did not mean to agree to that. Hey! Nope! You have successfully deleted all of your saved games. Great. Alright, that was actually a sanity effect, but, um... Uh, there you go. That's only actually, funnily enough... Funnily, I don't think that's a word. Uh, funny enough, that's only the second time I've ever had that happen. Uh, so that's one of the rarest, uh, sanity effects. Uh, so now... If you look at the painting, it shows a door behind the stairs, but there's no door. There's just this room. So the design is oddly reminiscent of a circle of power mentioned in the Tome of Eternal Darkness. It probably refers to some kind of spell in its alignment. So that's a Zelatoth seal. Let's cast Reveal Invisible, the spell that we got this um, in this stage, with Chaturga, who's the opposite. And hey, there's a door. Oops, it's locked. Use the key. Now another thing I actually want to do is uh, enchant my weapon. Uh, let's actually assign enchant. All right. So with the enchanted <coughs> weapon, I think I believe with Jeturga, uh it's going to do more damage against Zelatol zombies. But I think. Um, where Chaturga represents strength, um, having your weapon enchanted along his lines will, uh, oh crap. Alright. Uh, but I think having it enchanted with, uh, the room will also just deal more damage in general. Which is really cool. Gotta love that. Uh, I don't know why I'm picking up this ammo. I'm not actually going to use the flintlocks again, but... Anyway, detail. A scroll of paper rests on the rim of the well by the wall. Damage field. So what that does, I believe it puts up a mystical barrier around you. Which, um... Oh. So we got to drain the well. It's a good thing we've got the pump handle. Alright, so making our way down the well, and what's going on here? Alright, so for those of you that watched the opening, the, the first episode of this playthrough, that door is the same door that uh, in Alex's dream sequence she ends up running to 
uh, while somebody screams, you know, may the rats eat your eyes, the darkness comes. Um, perfect. Um, so that was the same door, but actually what I want to do here now is one of the things, neat things you can do in this game is you can actually just try to make spells out of the runes that you have. Uh, you don't actually need the scrolls to learn these spells. So, uh, what I have now is uh, the Protect rune. Uh, I had Protect Area, which is that magical barrier that um, things can't attack or get through. But I'm going to do Protect Self. So that just gave me Spell 7. Uh, so I'm going to go to Spell List. Uh, I can't really know anything about it, but uh, I can assign it with Chaturga to the Y key, uh, button. And that is the shield spell. So Protect Self is a shield. And uh, those three orbs that are going around me here... Oh, let's just check this out right quick. Uh, so Max is incredulous at the site. A desolate ruin of a fantastic city built into a huge, naturally formed cave. Jutting spires and looming buildings poke through the dense fog. Light ebbs through the city, crackling in the wake of the energy spilling from a light source, held aloft by unseen forces. Uh, so each of these orbs will actually absorb a hit. Uh, I want to say that with um, Chaturga, it... I want to say if they get, if an enemy attacks me, it actually hurts them back. I want to say. Um, I know that with Zelatoth, it, if you have the green orbs around you, it, what it does is it actually prevents sanity loss, but you lose one of the protection, protective orbs. Oh, that is a gross creature. All right, so this is one of the first kind of actual boss fights in the game. This is a guardian. And uh, they're not they're not great. I love that look on his face with the one eye just kind of partially closed. Like It's almost like a you've got to be kidding me. Uh, I forgot what... Uh, let's just re-enchant this. Alright. Actually, this would be an opportunity to use my flintlocks. So I guess I lied. Uh, these deep coming. Oh boy, uh, that is right there. Um, let's just attack like crazy. And we killed it! The accursed beast was dead, but not without its toll on me. That was but one. There was an entire city.
Well, that could have gone better. Uh, so yeah, that was the um, when we went to the bottom of the uh, the well. That was some pretty clever foreshadowing, actually. Um, I always kind of like that. It just you know very. It, I, it, I'm not going to say subtle because I think subtle is probably the wrong word, but I always thought it was kind of cool that um, that it did that. Like you see the door in Alex's flat like dream sequence, and you hear some of those phrases. You see the ghost of, uh, of Maximilian Roivas going into the servants' quarters, and then Max sees sort of a glimpse of his future, uh, which is always kind of cool. Yeah, not gonna, not gonna answer that. Uh, so I don't know. I just, I just always thought there was a lot of really cool, um, just design choices that they did with this game. there's anything that I need here. Okay. Alright, uh, so I think the next chapter page is still upstairs. Uh, do, do, do. So I went in that room, so let's go into this room. And, uh, oh, hello. Yeah, nothing weird about that. Uh, yeah, so let's just go in here. Alright, so we have the dresser key, and we have what appears to be a, uh, another sigil. So, what we're going to do is we're going to end things here for this episode. We're going to come back, and uh, we are going to find a way to access this dresser. So, thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. We'll see you next time.